Uh, Illinois beats Rutgers 86 to 63 in this one. Uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. came back and he had 16 points on 28 minutes. He did not start in this one, but he did get uh, some starter minutes. He played the fourth most minutes on the team. Uh, we're going to talk about this game, but just a little disclaimer. I know that the Terrence Shannon Jr you know, conversation is very uh, tumultuous right now because everybody wants to talk about what's going on legally and all that stuff. Um, we're just going to talk about his performance on the court. We're not really going to talk about all that stuff. One, I'm not a legal expert. Two, I, this is not the podcast to really get into that stuff. A Lion Eye cast has gone into that a little bit, explaining the situation. So uh, I highly recommend them as they know much more about it. But in referencing Terrence Chan Jr., we're just going to talk about his play on the court. And if he stops playing on the court, then we will just move on and probably start much talking much more about Marcus Domask because he scores a lot of points too when Terry Chan Jr. is not there. Speaking of Marcus Domask, only 12 points in this game on 33 minutes. He did have seven rebounds, five assists, so a good game from him. He obviously is not getting the same production with Terry Chan Jr. in the game. Kent, what were your thoughts on the big win for Illinois? Yeah, uh, Rutgers just completely overmatched in this game. I mean, you look at some of the things that you want to do on the road or even just in any Big Ten matchup that will get you a win, and Rutgers did all of those things wrong. They had three guys in double figures. Illinois had five. They got out-rebounded by 13. They only hit three three-pointers. Now, I will say their their perimeter defense was pretty good. They held Illinois to only six, but you can't hit three three-pointers on the road and expect to pick up a win, especially against a team like Illinois. Um, just a completely different game than what we saw when they beat Nebraska. I mean, in overtime just earlier this week, I believe it was. Um, just didn't see the same um, want to from Rutgers that we saw in that first game. And it, it was just a game that uh, Rutgers was better at, or I'm sorry, Illinois was better at every position and uh, just kind of kept control of this game throughout. It just wasn't really... To me, there wasn't really a storyline in this game other than that Illinois is better than Rutgers. It's kind of something that we knew going into it. So uh, not much to really say about this one. Well, there wasn't even like a huge run in the first half. I think it was just like this slow pull away that Illinois had. Yeah. You could just like feel it happening at the beginning of the game where it just felt like Rutgers was not in it for this one. They made a bit of a surge. I think they cut it to 10 or 8 uh, late mm -hmm. into the first quarter, so there was a bit of a surge there, but at the end of the day, you could just tell this was this was Illinois' game. They were not going to lose at home in this one, um, and this is, I mean, this is what a you know, top 15, top 10 team in the country should do, is they should have an inferior team come in, and they should easily take care of them, move on, go to the next game. So massive props to them. Um, I'm more and more impressed with Brad Underwood and what he is doing each and every game. You know, I've not always been a Brad Underwood fan, but I think that he's doing a great job with the team this year. Um, and I like that he brought Terrence Shannon Jr. off the bench. And when Terrence Shannon Jr. was going well, I think, you know, he didn't hit like his first four shots or something like that. He kept him in there and he let him go through it. And, and I thought that was a good move by Brad Underwood. Um, and I just, I don't have anything bad to say about the Illinois, uh, the uh, Alliance in this one Anthony what were your thoughts on the game yeah so I mean from Rutgers perspective if you you know shoot thir three for 14 from deep you're not gonna you're not gonna get a road win and Rutgers has been just anemic offensively this year defensively obviously they're they're able to to slow opponents down and that keeps lets them hang around but when they're when they're you know when they're not playing in uh, Piscataway it's scary times for them um Really, their center, uh, Amori, was, I, I can never pronounce his name. Amori. Really, yeah, Amori was really the only threat, right? Um, and Illinois couldn't really do much defensively with him. He was he was pretty efficient today. But outside of that, Mag was a complete non-factor, two points today. Hyatt was pretty average for by his standards, had 11 points, 5 of 12. Um, overall, just not enough offensive output, output from Rutgers to, to you know, stay, you know, stay relevant in this one. They did pull to within four in the second half. They were down like 55, 51, but immediately after that, Illinois went on a quick five Oh run and never, it, it never got back down to single digits after that. It was just a kind of a, you know, nail in the coffin type moment. Um, with Terrence Shannon back, Illinois just sees a whole new level of, um, intensity on defense and intensity in transition. Um, you could tell tonight that he was a little bit slow. You could tell that he was trying to get his conditioning back and obviously trying to stay in 
D1 conditioning shape like in the game is going to be hard, but he did pretty admirable given given the time that he had off. Um, Illinois is always going to bother teams defensively with the amount of length that they have on the perimeter um, with Damask and Goody and Rogers, um, and now having Shannon back, and then having a guy like Coleman Hawkins. I've i um I love a good stat sheet stuffer. And there's been no one better this season at doing that than Coleman Hawkins. He's just been, he's taken his game to another level. And honestly, he's putting himself into NBA, you know, maybe he won't get drafted, but undrafted free agent. Absolutely. I could see him wind up on an NBA roster. Um, So he had what 12 points, nine rebounds, four assists and five steals. Super versatile on both ends of the floor. He can really stretch you out with his ability to hit from deep. Um, you know, but also post up if he needs to, um, in terms of defensive, you know, he's really mobile for, for a guy with his length. Um, but then he's also got the length on the inside to bother a center. So, you know, a guy like Hawkins has just been invaluable for Illinois, particularly defensively, but just overall really, a really a nice glue guy for this team. Um, and then I think Harmon too, coming, coming off the bench, he's, you know, he's been shooting lights out recently. So, and you saw it today, he had 18 points today. Um, so yeah, when Harmon, when Harmon's clicking and all of the guards are, are, you know, they're just relentless. So really impressed with Illinois. I think Rutgers is 0 and 8 at, at State Farm Center since moving to the Big Ten in 2015. So unfortunately that streak will go on another year. <laughs> Tough place. Anthony, to uh, I got a quick question. question you know, Anthony, hand up. If I can. Yeah. What's up? I, I actually DM Coleman Hawkins and asked him to come on my podcast and he, he hasn't responded yet. So just a question about his, you know, decision making skills going into the NBA, like not coming on my podcast, so or not responding at least at this point, at this moment in time. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Was there a question in there? Yeah. So what what do you think about his decision making skills about not responding to my DM? I think he is wise to focus on uh, helping his team win. <laughs> no, I think um, I think anybody who spurns a true um, a true basketball loving Twitter account and podcast really needs to evaluate how how well they'll be liked about liked by the fans of you know the team that they're eventually going to. So totally true. with you. I've had you know Trey Holloman retweeted my stuff. Great guy, nothing but great things to say about him. So you know if you get. If you get player interaction, it's it's all the much better. But so, if he's watching right now, Coleman, if you're watching, I think he, I feel like he is watching at this moment. Oh, yeah. So if you're watching, can you respond to the DM and maybe pop on the show just for like 15 minutes? I just want to chat about basketball if with you. If he's not verified, I'll see if I can DM him to it. Or I guess you probably need a check mark to verify him. I'll or to, to to DM him, but I'll DM Coleman too and see if I can get him to to respond. Back. Yeah, if everyone that's listening could DM Coleman Hawkins and tell him to come on my he's show, he's great, great on Twitter. By the way, he's he is so he actually he's is hilarious really on Twitter. <laughs> He's like the Lane Kiffin of college basketball players. <laughs> also, this is the um, this is the high. Uh, just back to the Illinois. Th- this is their highest scoring team in three decades since ninety three ninety four. So this team is just yeah. Uh, Sunny Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, Coleman Hawkins, say Jerry. Hey, I will gladly say it. First uh, team 11, at the very least. <laughs> Eleven steals in his past two games. So between that, I was just getting ready to say that if Coleman Hawkins got a triple double with points, rebounds, and steals, I would not be surprised. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm predicting it, but if it happened, I'd be like, oh wow, yeah, that makes sense. Coleman Hawkins is who Coleman Hawkins is. So, um, yeah, no, I I completely agree. I think Coleman Hawkins is defensive player of the year potential. He's definitely up there in my power rankings. He'll at least be top four, I would think. Um, just going off the top of my head, but yeah, no, he's really shown out lately and, and been able to do that. And I saw some people putting him on uh, their first team for. Big Ten defense, whatever, all Big Ten defense or whatever. So now I think Coleman Hawkins and and I remember going into the year, Coleman Hawkins, I said, was one of my favorite players in the Big Ten. The biggest thing for me was, can he be consistent? Can he put it together each and every game? I don't think there has been a player who has benefited more. And I'm not trying to say from the situation, but just from Terrence Shannon Jr. being out 
than Coleman Hawkins because Coleman Hawkins has had to take that leadership role. You know, I think obviously Marcus Domask has taken that scoring role, but the team has looked to Coleman Hawkins more often to, you know, really be that guy who can keep them together. And, you know, for him, if you have Coleman Hawkins playing like that and Terrence Shun- Terrence Shannon Jr. playing to his top potential, guys, I, I know it sounds crazy, but this is an Elite Eight Final Four team. If those two guys are playing at their Final Four potential or at, that, at their highest potential, this is an Elite Eight Final Four team. And I would not be surprised at all if they made it to the national championship. I'm not predicting that it will happen. I've heard some people predict that. I, I you know, I'm not predicting that, but it would not surprise me at all. Kent, are you with me on that? Or is this like the Chucky Hepburn situation where I'm crazy? No, I think I think that's a good take that what you're saying. I mean, his defense is really good. I mean, I'm 0 for 1 in his DMs right now. So like his defense is Defending amazing, you. I think. Yeah. For me, especially. I, need to, but I no, really I, need him to block you to solidify <laughs> my take on his defense. Right? If he that, blocks that me, really... if, he, if I go 0 for 1 with a bl- and I get my shot blocked, oh, man. His defense, <laughs> I'll put him for sure on my, uh, I'll vote him number one in his defensive rankings. But no, no, I think this is a team that can make a run, no doubt. Especially, I do think that they, I'm, I'm one of the few people that thinks that, or maybe I'm not, but uh, I do think that they need Terrence Shannon Jr. to be on the team, though, and playing at a high level for them to make a deep run, though. And, you know, they did show that they can do it without him, but I need him to be there throughout the season and, um, uh, you know, kind of carry that team to a Final Four because he is their best player. And uh, especially when it comes in March, you need those really good high-level guards to carry you deep into the tournament. Yeah, and that's the thing about Coleman Hawkins is, you know, he's not a guard, but he definitely has ball handling skills. And so he's one of those guys that, you know, he just adds another ball handler onto the court and, you know, he'll give the ball up and then go post up in the post. And so uh, just such a versatile player. uh, And I just I love watching him play. Honestly, I just love watching this Illinois team play. I think that they're a lot of fun. And I think that Brad Underwood's making good decisions. And um, I, you know, I would not be surprised if, you know, if they tied for the Big Ten, you know, championship, or if they made it to the Big Ten championship in the tournament or anything like that, I wouldn't be surprised at all because it's a really good team. Thanks for listening to the Big Ten Huddle. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at nine o'clock. So come in, check us out. Get in the chat. Let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Ten.